Great. So, um, hello and good evening to those joining from the U.S. Ohio gozaimasu to our guests from Japan. It is our pleasure to welcome you to our event, focusing on Japanese health and wellness. My name is Paul Pass, and I'm the Executive Director of the Japan America Society of Dallas-Fort Worth. This event is one of many we have presented online since spring of this year, and we are happy that you could join us during both sorry, during Japan America Society's 50th anniversary season, which runs through 2020. Of course, we have all been affected by COVID-19 and we wish everyone safety and health during this uncertain time. In our current global situation, it is essential that we continue to communicate across borders and cultures, as well as within our own communities. Our program this evening is part of achieving this goal. Before we begin, I would like to share that this program is being offered for free. In order to keep our events free of charge or at a low cost to attend, the Japan America Society is in need of your contributions more, more now than ever before. We have seen donations of $10 for similar programs, but a gift of any amount is appreciated. In a few moments, we will share a QR code. I think it's on there now. And um, in order to access this link, you just need to open your phone's picture app and hold it over the QR code for a few seconds. Some of you may even have a specific QR app on your phone. Um, and when you hold it up to that, that QR code, it will link to our online giving portal. If you do not have a smartphone, or if you're using your phone to actually watch this program, we will share a link in the chat box just in a few moments. Lastly, I wanted to go over some suggestions to maximize your experience. Um, and actually, yes, Madoka, we can keep the, the QR code there for a moment so people can use it. Um, in terms of uh, experiencing the program, please note that your cameras and microphones are off. If there are any technical issues, such as you are unable to hear the presenters, then please use the chat function. If you have questions during the event, please use the Q&A function on the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to ask early, since we may not be able to address all questions. Please also note that this webinar will be recorded and we plan to upload to YouTube soon. I will serve as your moderator for tonight's program and before learning more about our panelists, I want to share some key points to remember. As many of you already know, health and wellness are both far reaching topics and they, they cover many different components. Moreover, there are even different interpretations of these concepts within Japanese traditions. We certainly cannot cover the entirety of this conversation in one hour this evening. And today we will just focus on a, a few areas and we encourage you to ask questions for us to address near the end of the program. We will certainly do our best to address these comments and these questions and, and to increase your understanding of health and wellness. I also want to share a disclaimer that neither the Japan America Society of Dallas-Fort Worth nor our panelists claim that any of the actions or products discussed today will cure COVID-19. Our goal is merely to provide suggestions on healthier living, and these often go hand in hand with healthy behaviors to lead to an improvement in the quality of life. Now let's meet our speakers. First, we have Dr. Nada Milosavljevic, if I pronounced that correctly, is the founder and director of the Integrative Health Program at Massachusetts General Hospital and an instructor at Harvard Medical School. She is also the founder and CEO of Sage Tonic, uh, an innovative holistic program for wellness. She is a double board certified Harvard trained physician and faculty member at Harvard Medical School, whose practice includes treatments utilizing integrative and functional medicine. She holds uh, specialty certifications in regenerative and functional medicine, medical acupuncture, Ayurvedic medicine, and Chinese herbal treatments. Prior to her career in medicine, Dr. Nada practiced law with a focus on intellectual property in the biotech industry. She is the first MD slash certified teeth T specialist in the US and has served on the advisory board of the specialty, specialty T Institute, worked as a medical advisor to international tea industry journals and is a contributing health and wellness writer for several publications. She has authored numerous publications and crit critically acclaimed book, Holistic Health for Adolescents. Dr. Nada has been featured in popular media, including Glamour, Oprah, Health, and NBC's Today, just to name a handful. In September 2018, she became the MD host of Spartan Health, a YouTube and podcast show, which is part of the Spartan Up 
podcast series. Next, we have Rona Tyson, who is the Executive Vice President of Corporate Relations at Itoen North America, which is the US office of Japan's number one green tea brand and the world, world's leading purveyor of premium and sustainability grown green tea and healthy beverages. Rona is responsible for maintaining and developing the company's corporate image through branding, public relations, and promotional events. The company has received numerous awards to include recognition as one of 50 companies changing the world by fortune for its commitment to sustainability and the revitalization of tea farms through its tea region development project. In addition to her role at Itawin, Rona serves, as, serves on the board of the Tea Association of the USA and the Tea and Health Committee, the US Japan Council and Advisory Board of the Global Tea Initiative at the University of California Davis and member of the Tea and Herbal Association of Canada. She has been a speaker at the World Tea Expo, San Francisco, Los Angeles and Northwest Tea Festivals, the United Nations, Shizuoka World Tea Festival, James Beard House and Smithsonian Lecture Series. She received the 2017 John Harney Lifetime Achievement Award for educational contributions to the tea industry. The first woman to ever receive this prestigious award. And in a moment, we will also share a link in our chat box if you would like to read more about our speakers. So at this point, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Nada to open the program and to, to share some of her thoughts. Um, wonderful. Um, and I guess at this point, am I, can I begin my slides or are we just talking? Yes, so they're up there now. There. Yes, yeah, so um, we'll have them in just a moment. Okay. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Madoka. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, today, my area that I'd like to discuss with you um, regarding tea and health, and specifically uh, green tea, is related to antioxidants. But, um, well, next slide, please. Oh, next slide. Right before that, there's a thank you. Oh, right there. <laughs> um, so, as we discuss the health benefits of tea, to give you some idea, there are literally dozens of healthy compounds in this single plant. Uh, today, I'm only going to touch upon antioxidants, but there are many. Uh, but there's also hundreds of other compounds in, in tea. Some have yet to be elucidated. So, it's so important to keep research going. Uh, regarding tea and health because there's a, a lot that we have yet to discover that can even add to the already many health benefits that we see with tea. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, so in every sip we take, there are a lot of health benefits. As I said, I'm going to talk about um, antioxidants, um, but there's also things like L-theanine, which um, many of you have likely heard of, um, but even the caffeine in tea coupled with the L-theanine can have some profound health effects. But again, I'm going to focus on antioxidants, but we can get into some of these other topics um, a bit after during our discussion. And next slide, please. Thank you. So um, as I said, I'm going to talk about antioxidants and in particular, the um, benefits to all of us when we drink them and some of the functions they serve in the body. But what many don't know is that antioxidant or the term antioxidant is a broad category or an umbrella term for a lot of other uh, sub uh, types or subclasses of antioxidant. And then I'm also going to mention from a lab evaluation standpoint or from um, from the vantage point of seeing patients, some of the health benefits that we see physiologically. Next slide, please. All right, so this is a relatively simple depiction of what an antioxidant does. It may look a bit like a Pac-Man video, but it, it does adequately uh, show you what antioxidants do in the body. So you see below the definition, it slows or prevents the oxidation of another substance. For any of us, just part of being alive and engaging in day-to-day -day metabolic processes, we produce free radicals. Those are oxidated compounds. And those compounds can be ha harmful to us, so we have to have them removed from the body. And that's exactly what antioxidants do. They neutralize or render innocuous those free radicals that could be very damaging. 
Next slide, please. Thank you. So antioxidants, again, in terms of their benefit and function, they're these free radical scavengers, which are produced by day-to-day -day processes. So your antioxidant uh, capacity needs to be available or functioning well all the time. You know, it's not as if, you know, once a week you're going to have uh, free radical buildup that has to be removed from the body. This is something that occurs every day all the time. So it's important to keep that antioxidant capacity at an adequate or optimal level. And in terms of a lot of the research or articles that you might read now, one of the things that antioxidants does or antioxidants can do is they attenuate or they can help lessen inflammation. So what happens is free radicals produce a chain reaction in the body and they can damage cell structures. That leads to inflammation, that leads to cell aging, that can contribute to things like cardiovascular disease, cancer. So this inflammation that's produced from that process is definitely uh, unhealthy, but what we're now learning more about in medical research is that that inflammatory process is sort of the uh, slippery slope to many chronic conditions we see today, cardiovascular disease, um, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, even thyroid disorders. So it's very important to calm that inflammation and have antioxidants at the ready um, on a regular basis. Next slide, please. So in terms of the different types of antioxidants and specific to tea, that is our topic this evening, um, on another subsequent slide, you're going to see um, kind of a, a decision tree. And it's going to branch out to show you some of the different types of antioxidants. But when we're talking about teas, we're talking about polyphenols, uh, a subgroup which are flavonoids, a subgroup of the flavonoids or catechins, and then sort of the darling in the research world, something you hear about quite a bit when we're talking about uh, green tea, is EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate. Very long term, um, so we're very happy to have the abbreviation of EGCG, but it's something that you see quite readily, and I'll go into a, a bit of detail as to why. Next slide, please. So here's that chart that I mentioned. So imagine this overarching umbrella, which are the antioxidants, and then you see the polyphenols. Now this could be a much longer discussion, but I'm just focusing now primarily um, on uh, green teas. But just to give you some idea, um, through Specialty Tea Institute, uh, STI, and, and hello to any of you from STI that are listening this evening, um, this became uh, this whole topic of tea and health. Um, I have it as a nine hour course with STI. So um, when we taught that, you can imagine all of the different health benefits, all of the different uh, nuances that you can get into. So this is just a small sliver and I wanted to highlight that so people don't think this is all there is in terms of uh, tea and health. So looking to the right side, polyphenols, you work your way down to the flavonoids and then there's those catechins. Next slide, please. And the catechins really pack a powerful punch in terms of antioxidant capacity. So these we consume from foods, but especially tea. And when you see to the left side of this screen, I mentioned catechins, there's several different types. So I don't want you to think there's only one. It's just that the EGCG um, compound is the most researched of all the catechins. So you tend to see it the most, but it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It has a host of different health benefits. And as a physician, what I always tell my patients is food as medicine is a wonderful approach to preventive health. And tea is a perfect example of that. In, in addition to a host of minerals, there's many healthy compounds. Antioxidants or antioxidant support is just one of them. Um, when there is something that you can use on a regular basis, it's, it not only tastes good, but it has all these health benefits, and Rona is going to go into a bit more, a lot of the meditative aspects of preparing and drinking a cup of tea, it's really a wonderful addition to your daily diet. Um, another thing I always tell patients is that prevention is the most direct path to wellness. So this is just one of those tools that we can use on a regular basis to really bring that to life and engage in active preventive health. Um, on that note, I'm ready to pass it over to Rona. Thank you.
Let me unmute. Thank you, Nada. That was beautiful. My goodness. I hope everyone's running to go get their green tea now. Um, well, first of all, it's such an honor and pleasure, and, and thank you, Paul, for, Paul, for having, you know, myself, Panada, to talk about uh, Japanese health and wellness and green tea in particular. Um, it's very close to my heart. Um, I, my mother's Japanese and my father's American, and I grew up spending a lot of time uh, in Japan uh, drinking tea with my grandmother, and it was just part of uh, my inherit in my culture. And what I do remember specifically was my grandmother always saying, if you have a sore throat, gargle with green tea. And I used to roll my eyes and, and uh, think it was just a wives tale. But now I look back and I go, I think she had some uh, truth in that. So um, I would like to start since uh, Nana did touch on the health benefits. And it's so nice to have, um, uh, you know, a professional doctor to be able to uh, talk about the catechins, but I do have a video that I'd like to show because I think it really captures the beauty and the aesthetics of Japanese green tea and the Japanese tea ceremony. So I'm going to start with this uh, video, and it, it is a little bit about matcha, but uh, to set the tone on um, Japanese chado, which is the new wave tea. In the world of tea, there has been a culture called Kuchikiri no Chaji for a very long time. Spring, freshly ground tea leaves are picked and stored in a teapot. Summer, the pot is stored in a cool place to mature over time. The leaves are left alone to mature until autumn. And winter finally arrives. The seal of the pot is cut open and the matcha is prepared by grinding the leaves using a millstone. By letting the leaves mature, the bitterness is lifted to acquire the delicious, mellow taste of the Kuchikiri Matcha. The old culture of enjoying seasonal matcha has remained over many generations and still continues to this day. Itoen. Well, thank you. I hope you all enjoy that. I have seen that uh, video a million times, but I never tire of it. I'm always sort of in awe of the beauty of it. And so much about the Japanese art of tea, which um, originated when we think of matcha, uh, the centerpiece of chado, which is the new way of tea. And it started uh, historically, I mean, tea seeds were brought over from China, but Japan created their own tea culture. And so I will start with the slide. Madoko, do you mind showing the slide? Yeah, so that's a beautiful Japanese uh, manicured tea gardens where all the tea is harvested. Next. Next slide. Thank you. So um, the way of tea, and this is very much, uh, I think really is, really embodies the Japanese culture. And in Chado, the essential component in the tea ceremony is its spirit. And it's not just about whisking a bowl of tea, but it is sort of the, the mood and the spirit and being in tune with your environment and the aesthetic refinements of art and nature, uh, personal contemplation and the pleasure of engaging in conversation with your guests. And while gathering around a bowl of bright green matcha. And today I know matcha has taken on a whole new uh, life of its own here in United States with everybody enjoying matcha with smoothies and so forth. But uh, it originated with the, the tea ceremony. And part of the whole experience of the tea ceremony was uh, enjoying the seasons, enjoying all the accoutrements. Uh, and the spirit and the principles of Japanese tea ceremony is wa ke se jaku, which embodies harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. And I really think that comes through so much in the Japanese culture. So next slide. 
And this was a saying by uh, Masakazu Izumi, and he actually is descendant from uh, one of the grand tea masters from the Uda Sanke, but I loved him saying that it is a beautiful drink called matcha. This form of tea spawned a whole sphere of culture that provides refreshment to body and soul alike. So part of the whole preparation, and that's the whisk uh, in, in the bowl there, but the chasen, but to whisking that matcha, as we saw in the video, really is part of a ritual. And it takes many years of practice. If you were to ask somebody actually with a urasenke, how long does it take to learn? But um, it's really connecting to your environment, to the natural beauty, um, the accoutrements, the tea bowl, um, the movement, uh, the flower arrangement that really evokes the season. So all those elements are take part and it really impacts, I think, the, the spirit, the, the soul, and of course, the wellness of, of your body, I think, just through the whole experience, as well as the delicious bowl of matcha. Next slide. So I'm often asked the difference between matcha and green tea. Well, matcha is ground whole tea leaves, as we saw, and green tea, which is embodies the, the senchas, the gyokudos, are tea leaf. And that is something you steep, whereas the matcha is ground, and you actually ingest and you consume the entire tea leaf, which is why so many are really, um, there's been a passionate following now with matcha because you get the full vitality and the benefits of the tea leaf. Next slide. So again, the origins of matcha was started with the tea ceremony in Japan and it was first brought over to Japan by the Zen Buddhist monks. And it wasn't until the 16th century that uh, Sen no Rikyu, who was the very influential figure of Chara, the new way of tea, who really popularized and um, brought this really unique uh, tea culture to Japan. Next slide. So here you see um, over to the right is the traditional Japanese um, uh, tea house. And there's a small opening, if you can see, it's a three foot by three foot opening. And one enters into the chashitsu, which is the tea room. And the idea is that you disassociate yourself from your outside world and you enjoy uh, the solitude, the, the, um, the being a guest and the host will prepare your bowl of matcha. You'll enjoy the accoutrements, the, as I said, the, the flower arrangement and the beautiful um, tea bowl and preparation, the movement. It really is a, a whole art form and takes many, many years to really uh, perfect it, but um, again, it's enjoying that bright, herbaceous cup of tea, and it's sort of um, brings a lot of uh, relaxation and, to your spirit. And it's also to appreciate the simplicity as well as the beauty of imperfection. And you'll see on the bottom left-hand corner is the Japanese tea bowl, and there are different tea bowls that uh, for season, the chasen, which is a uh, the whisk, bamboo whisk, and it is actually one piece of bamboo, and it really is an exquisite piece of art. Uh, and then you, you have the shaku, which is where you um, scoop the hot water to put in your um, tea bowl. And of course, this very vibrant, beautiful, silky um, matcha, which is Itoan matcha. And over on the right, you see the preparation that she's uh, preparing uh, the matcha in her chashitsu, which is the tea room. Next slide. So oftentimes people say, well, how is it made? Well, again, there's the, the tea leaf, which is the senchas, the gyokuros. Um, but to make a matcha, prior to that, in one step further, there's the gyokuro, which is shade-grown tea leaves. And from that shade-grown tea leaves, the next step to make a matcha is to have with the tencha, and all the veins and stems are removed. So it's deveined. So imagine you have a tea leaf that actually has, it's the, the, the full vitality of that tea leaf. So you know, once the teas have been harvested, they've been steamed and dried, you have the, the center photograph, which is the, the tea leaf and um, deveined with, with all the fiber removed. And that is stone ground into the matcha over to the right. And over the right, side you have the usu which is the um where they grind you it's a circular motion 
and it's quite laborious. It takes quite a bit of time to, um, to grind the matcha. Uh, today, of course, the, there's so much um, modernization and there's such a demand for matcha, even for culinary use, that there's a very um, sophisticated machines that do that. But that is the original uh, usu to grind the matcha. And traditionally, the matcha comes from the Uji region. Uh, that's where it's from, but a lot of areas do grow and um, uh, process the, the matcha. Next slide. So what, do you, what are the benefits? And I think Dr. Nada touched on, you know, which is such an honor to have her here to be able to talk about this. But again, I think from, from matcha, you, get, you, you consume the entire tea leaf. So you get all those, you know, the catechins, the antioxidants, uh, the multitude of vitamins that it has. And she also touched on L-theanine, which is really unique to the green teas, that there's the amino acid, which is known to give a sense of calm, alertness, and also for mental clarity, which is why, you know, the, the Zen monks used to uh, drink matcha. So it gave them a lot of focus, but a sense of calm for meditation. And again, the catechins, the EGCGs, uh, which Dr. Nada, I think, is going to elaborate a little bit more on. And of course, there's just vitamin C, there's the, the fiber. Um, there's so much goodness in the matcha today, which is why I think there is such a, um, uh, a, a passion right now in incorporating in your sort of daily regime. And antioxidants, I mean, we know that a lot of fruits and vegetables do have antioxidants, but matcha has uh, probably the most um, benefits for a, a very small, simple cup of, of matcha that you may uh, whisk or a smoothie that you prepare. So I think that really encaptures, and, and again, the uniqueness of the tea leaf is uh, once you steep the tea leaves, the, the leaves are discarded, but matcha, you really, really have the power, and so many people today are incorporating in their drinks, and their smoothies, as well as in cooking, um, savory or sweet dishes and so forth. So there's just a, I, I don't think ever, the, the Zen monks would have ever imagined where matcha has um, taken us today. But uh, and hearing Dr. Nada and all the great uh, uh, benefits of uh, it's, it would be a mistake not to incorporate it. So I think that's, next slide, I think that might be, oh, there is one slide. I, you know, I know I, I'm often asked in terms of, well, uh, you know, what does the Itoan have? Well, we have a, our particular brand, which is the Matcha Love, but we have so many different uh, varieties of um, the matcha. So you can have the on-the-go sticks that you can for travel, which is great when we can start traveling, of course. Uh, culinary, we also have the barista that you can simply put a, 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 you know, a latte together, as well as we have our ceremonial matcha. We have our usucha, and we also have our organic. So we have a, all, a, a whole full variety of, of different matchas, along with, of course, we have leaf teas, and of course, our ready-to-drink teas as well. So, you know, there's so many ways that we can incorporate that Japanese wellness into our, you know, daily diets, whether you're on the go to do a yoga or want to prepare a little uh, latte or a smoothie in the morning. So I think that might be it. And I think we, Nada and I can maybe have a little conversation and talk more. Well, um, thank you very much. Rona uh, and, and Dr. Nada for your, your contributions. Um, uh, so I, I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. Uh, so first of all, just curious um, how both of you are doing regarding COVID-19. Um, so uh, we have Rona in, in uh, New York. We have Dr. Nada in Boston, the Boston area. Uh, so I guess, first of all, let's go to Dr. Nada because um, Rona, I know I need to take a, have a little drink and, and get, get some of her breath back. Um, so Dr. Nada, how are things going for you? Um, they're, they're going well, Paul, um, you know, as well as can be expected. Um, I like to think that from any experience like this, I mean, it's been, you know, tragic and it's certainly uh, changed everyone's schedule in a pretty profound way, but I am an, the eternal optimist and I like to think that we learn from this, hopefully we become more resilient and uh, we're better prepared for anything that might come next. But, um, you know, everyone is hopefully learning to spend more time at home as we are this evening chatting from, you know, the different settings than we normally might. Um, but uh, certainly adjusting and um, appreciating, you know, the moments that, uh, that we do get to share. 
Great. Great. Thank you, Doctor. And Rona, how are things for you in New York? Well, I would have to say the same. Uh, you know, I really is uh, unprecedented territories. We're all sort of adjusting. Um, you know, the good news for us is, is seeing that uh, during this time, there's been really uh, a great demand for a lot of our teas. I think people are really uh, wanting to incorporate more healthier diets. And so we've been, uh, you know, blessed that uh, so many have really wanted to bring teas. So our online business has been great. So what could have been sort of a, a depressing time for us, we're quite pleased to see that we're making a difference in people's lives and bringing a little goodness into their lives. Uh, but it is an adjustment. I think we've become professionals at Zoom. Um, we've, like Nada, I think it's the silver linings and appreciating the small things. I think we're cooking more at home. I've been able to um, try some of those matcha recipes that I've been wanting to do for, for some time as well. And, uh, you know, sp spending time and, and I think in many ways by um, con connecting through, you know, our Microsoft Teams or our Zoom, it it's actually more of a direct connection um, in many ways. So uh, it's, it's been difficult, but at the same time, I'm trying to look at the positives. Um, you know, like in tea, they say, uh, appreciating the, the beauty of imperfection, and this is not perfect, but we're trying to make the best and see the beauty in what we can. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Rona. Um, so I wanted to continue along our conversation, I guess, learning more about our panelists. Um, so let's go back to Dr. Nada. Um, if you could just share, Dr. Nada, um, for those of you who've read your bio and, and know a little more about you, um, you have both an MD and a JD. And so just curious, your connections to Japanese culture, um, things you've learned, and, and, and just so we can learn a little more about your professional background. So if you could please share. No, of course, of course. Um, so my career, as you mentioned, um, it started in law, in the biotech industry. I, I loved sciences, but uh, as I was pra practicing attorney, um, I worked with a lot of research institutes, physicians, hospitals, and I realized I had such a love of medicine. So I actually made the change and went to medical school, much to the shock of my colleagues. They couldn't believe it, but uh, I've, I've loved every moment of it. Um, but while I was a medical resident, um, and this was 15 years ago, um, on the Harvard campus, they have an, an actual Japanese uh, tea room and they have programs and courses and you can study the Japanese tea ceremony. And I did that for a full year. And I developed such an appreciation, such a love, not just for green tea, but for the ritual, the process, the cultural aspects. And that really stuck with me. And in practicing um, medicine, I realized there's so many natural compounds as we research more and everything I do is evidence based, but uh, there's many things that we can incorporate into our diet that can have a really profound effect from a health standpoint, um, tea being one of them. So um, I developed a love uh, for tea and just kept up with my studies and certainly the other things I did um, within um, integrative medicine. Integrative is basically anything that's not the more traditional mainstream, but I do both because I think that's how we can really um, put together very personalized uh, protocols for patients. Um, as I was studying other forms of um, even acupuncture and other types of treatments, tea kept coming back into everything that I was doing. And now it's just such an um, integral part of my day-to-day uh, -day routine. Wonderful and great. We might have some more questions about uh, some of those backgrounds in a moment. Uh, so Rona, could you please share some of your background and connections to Japan? Well, interestingly enough, I, again, I had a Japanese mother, but uh, what really had a profound effect was I was maybe about 16 years old and my mother and I were in a Japanese restaurant and she watched me take the lid off my miso soup, the bowl. And I don't know if you know, but sometimes it's like a suction cup. And so I was wrestling with it. And my mother looked over and said, Ma, Tetsuki no Warikoto, which means basically you're so clumsy. And she said, you know, you've got to go take tea ceremony. Chado. Well, I scurried off, it went and started taking some tea ceremony classes. And, you know, it was actually, um, I was taken back by the time spent and having to learn all the, the ritual and so forth. However, I was so moved by how every detail counted, the, the discipline, the grace, 
um, the beauty in. So like Nada, I was really taken with all that and how it really, um, again, back to you, know, the fact there was such an appreciation for the, even the imperfection, the simplicity uh, of the tea bowl and, and who the ceramicist was, um, you know, the single flower that was in the tokonoma, all those elements uh, you, you sort of connect to the environment. And, and again, that started also influence with Zen Buddhism. And when I think today in terms of how people are very mindful and trying to connect within, um, you know, it very much comes from a lot of the, the, the traditions and culture of Japan, I believe. So um, that was my introduction. And of course, I spent so much time in Japan and I was somebody who loved green tea with my grandmother and of course unsweetened green tea so when i had the opportunity and itoan came to united states and said we're going to be in bring in our unsweetened green tea which of course the oyocha i was on it because i was never somebody who drank sugary beverages so uh it was a great pleasure to introduce and of course when i first came to not and when we started um people said well they knew you know green tea was good for them but it was very bitter uh, they were not familiar with that sort of taste profile. Um, but then when you ask them, let's say in terms of brewing tea, uh, they were using wrong temperature, the hot water, and you never put boiling water on uh, green tea leaves. So it started a little bit of education because you really um, need to know in terms of with green tea, it's a very fragile tea leaf, that water temperature is very important comparative to let's say a black tea. So a lot of the education, but today we're seeing that people are really embracing the taste of, of green tea, uh, enjoying they're a lot more adventurous and trying different tea leaves and, and incorporating matcha. So uh, it's been really a great experience for me to see that evolution and tapping into my Japanese heritage as well as of course being here in the United States. That's, that's great. Thank you so much, Rona. Um, I can share. So uh, Rona, uh, she showed the bottle of one of uh, uh, Itoen's oh, most yeah. products. Uh, yeah. um, and, you like uh, Oyocha? Yes, wonderful. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll find some time to talk about some of your other products um, towards the end of the program. But um, Itoen is also a corporate member of the Japan America Society of Dallas Fort Worth. So we're so appreciative of that as well. Um, well thank so, you. Uh, I want to quickly go back to Rona and then we'll go back to Dr. Nada after that. But when um, you refer to the term mindfulness. And so we've talked a little bit about that thus far, but so Rona, when you just hear the term mindfulness, what kind of things come to mind for you? Well, I think being mindful is, you know, to, to really sort of be aware, to be in the moment, to, to appreciate, to be sort of um, in tune with yourself, to be self-aware and, you know, to connect with your environment, um, you know, to be mindful of others uh, for yourself as well, to your environment. And so it's really obviously a state of mind. But again, I think it really does stem back to a lot of the Japanese, um, you know, tea culture in the, in the Chado. Um, you know, it's interesting because I know in Japan, a lot of companies, and I know Itoan as well, for the, a lot of their staff the executives, they'll send their uh, staff um, to learn and to experience a, a tea ceremony because it really helps in terms of mental focus, um, you know, being sort of connected and tuned um, and just be mindful of yourself, your environment and in kind of living that moment. So I think so many today and particularly during this COVID are really uh, trying to live a life, you know, despite what's going around and what's going on around them to um, kind of be self-aware and, and sort of in touch with their own spirit and soul. Mm. Uh, th th thank you very much, Rona. That's, uh, that's very insightful. Um, so now, Dr. Nada, um, when you hear the term mindfulness, what, do you, uh, what comes to mind for you? Yes, uh, well, certainly echoing Rona's beautiful comments because that is the heart of mindfulness. It's uh, very much in the moment, uh, which is why I loved when I was studying the Japanese tea ceremony. You can imagine the life of a 
busy, stressed out medical resident. And I looked forward to those moments where I could quietly sit and just be with my thoughts um, and appreciate the ceremony and every bit and every moment of it. Um, but one other thing too is it is a state of grace. It is a very non-judgmental atmosphere. Um, you're really just open to um, all sorts of, um, of thoughts. And I think at a time when uh, during COVID where everyone is feeling so stressed, everyone's stressed to the you know, limit, those mindful moments become increasingly important because from a health standpoint, that chronic stress, which mindfulness can help to reduce, it is so damaging uh, to the body. And engaging in mindful meditative practices can actually lower some of our stress hormones like cortisol. Um, it can uh, such meditative and mindful practices can help lower blood pressure, heart rate. You know, there's so many biologic parameters that can be improved by engaging in that sort of practice. And at, as in moments like what we're experiencing now with COVID, I think it becomes, you know, increasingly important to engage in that on a regular basis. So um, that's actually a great segue. And so Dr. Nada, we'll, we'll continue with you. Um, so certainly there's a lot of focus right now, given COVID-19, we're talking about general health. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess in some ways it might be specific to a disease, but, um, but certainly there's a, there's a discussion about what health means. Um, and you as, a, as an integrative medicine specialist, I'm sure you have plenty of ideas. Um, when you hear the term wellness, what are some things that come to mind? Right. So wellness, um, in, in my opinion, is a very personalized state. It's an individual's optimal state of health. And that can differ for all of us because wellness, you, you accept the person where they are, what their current status or state is, and optimize whatever parameters you can so that that person can experience the fullest in life. So as far as wellness, it's not just your physical health. It incorporates your mental health, your psychological, spiritual health, um, your intellectual uh, health, um, as well as the, the physical, of course. So it's all these different parameters that make up the whole um, of a person. And I think, especially now during COVID, I've had so many patients that um, I have done something that I think is a tantamount to our long-term health, is they're very concerned with now engaging in preventive health measures, optimizing their health, things that before were maybe nice to haves in terms of things they might do on a regular basis now become really um, an integral part of their day-to-day -day from whether it be mindfulness, yoga, exercise, eating well. Um, I mentioned food as medicine and tea. It's things that any of us can do on a regular basis that really can carry us a long way down the road uh, to prevent chronic conditions, uh, states of stress, uh, things of that sort. Mm -hmm. no, that's so a long really, answer, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, that's fine. Um, no, I mean, it's really a great response. And uh, I, I mean, definitely as someone who works on holistic practices, I think it, it makes sense mm -hmm. to focus on that. Uh, so um, Rona, if we could go to you, uh, what is your definition or at least what do you understand when you hear the term wellness? Well, I think it really is, you know, making choices. Um, you know, being healthy is one thing, but, you know, having a conscious uh, effort in terms of um, embracing what will give you a sense of wellness, whether or not is enjoying outdoor nature. And as Nana said, you know, trying to connect something that gives you kind of a spiritual happiness. Um, you know, I think everybody has to define their own sense of wellness, but you know, most importantly, is it's just not your body, it's your mind as well, your spirit. Um, so for me, wellness is being able to balance that. And everybody, I think, will have a different uh, degree of what they consider wellness. But it's your own personal sort of um, compass, in a sense, you know, your, your moral and spiritual compass. Um, I, I think it is good to know, I think, during this COVID period, and as Dr. Nana mentioned, you know, everybody is much more conscious of what they're eating or, or drinking, aside from maybe some cocktails. Uh, but I do think that people are taking a little bit more control of themselves and, you know, ensuring that, you know, uh, 
in that moment as well as you know tomorrow and and further out uh that they will have a life of um a, a spiritual and you know physical wellness i don't know if that sort of made sense mm -hmm. but uh it's sort of being in control and, and mapping out uh, what's going to feel good and um, keep you sort of, you know, on your on your happy trail. Mm -hmm. so, uh, thank you very much, Rona. Um, so now that we've established uh, some of your backgrounds and some some general concepts, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about your specific industries. So, uh, Dr. Nada, um, and you, you talked about this a little already, but how have approaches to holistic medicine, maybe even preventive medicine, um, how have those changed over the course of this year? So maybe looking at, you know, what kind of things were you talking about with patients in February and what are you talking about with them now? Oh, that's a great um, point, Paul. Um, so as I mentioned, definitely a much stronger interest on the part of patients to engage in preventive health practices. Um, also being very open um, to both mainstream medicine practices and some of the integrative and functional. And I can also give a definition of what integrative and functional medicine is. But I think people are realizing that they need to be very proactive about their health and really make it a, a concerted effort that it is going to become a part of their day-to-day -day routine. And, you know, in the past, you know, maybe patients may be a bit more worried about those, you know, whether it be losing some weight, uh, which is always important. We, uh, that could have a lot of negative health consequences, but now in terms of, you know, their immune health and realizing the importance of sleeping well, and there's all of these other health parameters that, again, they may have shelved in the past, but now that, that notion of really taking care of themselves on many levels, you know, it's a multifaceted mm -hmm. approach to lead a full healthy life. And that's the big push that I've seen is that a lot of people are really on board with that and they want measures and protocols so they can really dive in and start making some pretty big life changes to incorporate that. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Nada. And uh, I can share, um, obviously the, you know, this is the Japan America Society. So we, we are focusing on Japanese practices and Dr. Nada, as you heard from her uh, bio, she has, uh, you know, she's specialized in many different areas of medicine and uh, and, and di different concepts. So uh, she really brings a very, um, a very, you could say, integrative or holistic approach um, to the field. Uh, so now moving to um, to Rona. Um, so this could be kind of a larger question, not not just in 2020, but um, since uh, and so Rona, I believe you were the the first employee at Ito in North America. Is that, is that what I understand? Oh, you're dating me there. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't, yes. but uh, that's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yes. But uh, uh, and what, why I ask that is because since you have been with Itoen, um, how has the demand for products like matcha and green tea changed? Uh, so especially in the U.S. market, no. how has that changed? Well, it's really been tremendous. I mean, I, I have to say that from the time that I, I joined the company, where as you know, there was a buzz. Oh, I hear it's good for you, but it doesn't taste good. Um, again, a lot of times the preparation and so forth, and which is why we have our ready to drink because we do prepare it for optimal moment of enjoyment. But, you know, I, I think over time we're seeing that um, one, people are, are much more uh, mindful of their health and wellness, number one. Uh, we're seeing less and less um, uh, consumption of sugar, you know, sugar... Uh, it, it, people are starting to cut sugar out of their diet. So, you know, the fact that we had this whole line of, of uh, unsweetened teas was really very timely. It was, you know, once upon a time, it'd be like, what, no sugar? And then it became, oh, thank God there's no sugar. So that has been wonderful to see. Um, I think people are also very um, appreciative and there's a lot more uh, respect for Japanese cuisine as well. So I think more and more people are embracing you know, Japanese cuisine. Of course, what better way to uh, enjoy beverages and also enhance um, you know, the, the Japanese foods as well. Uh, but I'm, I, you know, I'm seeing the sort of convenience. Uh, again, the matcha was probably, I don't know, maybe about four or five years ago, there was a buzz that, that people would start be drinking matcha. And I don't think anybody would have imagined how big it became. Um, 
you know, it's really become mainstream. I mean, we're, we're seeing matcha in, uh, gosh, I think I saw Dunkin' Donuts was doing like a, a latte or something. So, you know, they're, they're really crossing over and, and realizing the, the health benefits of it and also appreciating the taste. Um, this has been great. People are really enjoying um, the umami of green tea. You know, uh, green tea has umami flavor, which is the fifth uh, taste sensation. A lot of chefs are cooking, let's say, with matcha and so forth. Um, so, you know, there's the, the element of um, it, it's good for you, of course, as Dr. Nada shared, and more and more studies come out that it's why wouldn't we be drinking tea, you know, when it comes to the cardio health and the Alzheimer's and so forth, um, uh, even oral hygiene. So there's been such great education a, a, about that. And also, I think what is really timely right now, and, and you know, I touched on a lot of the sort of um, spirit of, of tea, but, um, you know, the L-theanine in the green tea, which gives you that kind of calm and focus. Uh, the sort of that mental clarity is something I think people really are seeking. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, I think, during this period where people are, you know, there's a lot of mental health and depression and so forth, I think. Um, so it, 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 it's good to have um, the, this L-theanine element because it, whereas coffee, you know, Tea does have caffeine, but it's the L-theanine kind of gives you that kind of energy, but it kind of keeps you grounded, gives you that calm and sort of that no pen zen. So uh, I have seen that evolution and, and it's been really great. I mean, if we were talking about this probably 15 years ago, I think people would have looked at me as if, what? But people are very much in tune to it. You know, they're, they're welcoming um, the taste of umami tastes of, of tea. They're appreciating the fact that it's um, unsweetened. A lot of our line is. Uh, they like the fact that they're getting all the full benefits. And we are in a very plant-based diet uh, uh, lifestyle today. And it's very fitting. You know, I think tea fits into that plant-based uh, uh, lifestyle. So it, it's sort of, we've been very, very fortunate to see how, um, I think, lifestyle and how the Western palate has really embraced uh, green tea into their daily regime. And, and could I mention something on that point? Yes. Uh, Paul, to, your, to what you mentioned, Rona, um, one of the beautiful things about tea that is unique to tea is you mentioned it has caffeine, which most people think, you know, it's stimulatory. Right. It can stimulate dopamine, norepinephrine, those are excitatory right. neurotransmitters. But when it's coupled with L-theanine, L-theanine triggers GABA neurotransmitters, which are down-regulating and calming. And it's this beautiful synergy of the two because yes. the L-theanine passes, into, passes the blood-brain barrier to the brain. So it's this unusual synergy where you get a mild stimulatory effect, yet it can still give you a very calm uh, sense of well-being. So it's a, a unique, um, a unique uh, sensation or a unique outcome, if you will. Yes. So my two bits on that, but. <laughs> no, that, that's great. Well, I know even with our Matcha Love brand, we came out with that brand because so many people thought, well, matcha was, a, you know, you got to go and do the traditional ritual, but we wanted to bring a little bit more uh, friendly or upbeat, younger sort of a, a take on it. And we always say that little matcha, you know, gives you that great energy, the good energy, but keeps you grounded. So you can juggle 10 many things, whether got you know three kids at home um it will keep give you that energy but keeps you grounded mm -hmm. so we do say stay grounded with our matcha love uh, and th thank you so much rona and dr nada we're going to move to audience questions in just a moment uh, but i wanted to share for our audience in uh, the dallas fort worth area um, if you'd like to buy ito and products they can be found in many different areas but i think probably mitsua marketplace would be the best so that is in um, kind of uh, east, northeast Plano area. Mm -hmm. um, right. And there's actually um, even a space that's called Matcha Love um, that serves, you can have green tea ice yes. cream. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, so we encourage that. Mitsuo well, Marcus. thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank so, you so. very much. And HEB does carry it. And all mm -hmm. that's well we have our Itoan.com and doorstep delivery and even the Amazon world. So it's wonderful. Thank you, Paul, for that.
Sure, sure. So um, let's move to some questions. Uh, so first of all, and obviously we've, we've been talking a lot about green tea and some of our listeners um, are interested about black tea. Um, so uh, do you know, in terms of black tea, does it have the same levels of antioxidants and health properties as green tea? This could be for either one of you. Dr. Okay. Nada. Oh, sure. I'll chime in and then Rona, please. Uh, yeah. um, so first of all, simple answer, yes. Black tea absolutely has health benefits as well, but some are a bit different. Um, so in terms of the EGCG that I was talking about this evening, um, green tea does have uh, that in a higher uh, amount for sure. Um, in black tea, there's things like theorubigens um, that are part of the tannins. If, if people could think back to the um, antioxidant kind of tree that I showed, if you're more down the direction of the, the tannins um, and you get to the theorubigens, uh, those um, also have um, health compounds as well. There are antioxidants, but again, they could take on a different form depending on how the tea is processed. And so the antioxidant type or level can be affected to some degree. But long-winded long answer, I should simply say yes, they do have health benefits as well. <laughs> All tea is good. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have another question about green tea, uh, or actually this one is specific to matcha. I think this, uh, this attendee wants different ways to experience matcha. So does matcha maintain its benefits even if consumed outside of tea, such as when matcha powder is used in baked desserts? Yes, you still get the benefits of the matcha, of course. Um, and, you know, I think that part of the beauty is being adventurous and you can experience and create, you know, I think a lot of people when they have their first bowl of uh, matcha, they're a little bit startled because it is a very bold and herbaceous and grassy taste. But, you know, I do recommend if you'd like to add a little honey, if, again, you can add it into your smoothies or um, incorporate it into, you know, even uh, savory dishes, whether it's a, a sauce. Um, one of my favorite things is to do is to do in, in salad into vinaigrettes, putting matcha into a vinaigrette so you can have grilled vegetables, so I, it really is up to, to you, but yes, you do still get the benefits. Mm -hmm. Great. It is a very versatile um, mm -hmm. tea. That's great. And so I was sharing that, for example, Matcha Love um, does have green tea ice cream. Um, yes. I think they might even specifically call it matcha ice cream. Yeah. Yes. Um, great. Uh, so one of our- You do have to indulge sometime. Yes. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just take a few more questions. Um, uh, so I guess, first of all, for, back for Rona, um, are the stems uh, that you remove from the green tea leaves, are those used for anything after? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, there is some teas that actually are a little bit of, um, you know, there's kukicha. The, generally not, but you can use it. There are some uh, teas that are a little bit more made from the, the stems and the more fibery. But you know the part of the reason of of removing it, of course, is because you want that leafy, that meaty part of the tea leaf, and that's where all the great um, nutrients are. And and in terms of uh, get more of the the, the punch of, of the green tea, so um, it is used, but not generally uh, high on the the tea list, let's so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so going now to Dr. Nada. Um, how often and how much green tea should be consumed for optimal health benefits? Okay, um, excellent question. Um, and of course, it can vary depending on how the tea is, is processed. Um, but to give you some idea, um, many of the studies that look at green tea, as little as two to four cups can be consumed uh, per day to reap some of the cardiovascular benefits um, and some of the anti-inflammatory benefits. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, some people think they have to consume 10, 12 cups a day, um, and that's not the case. That's certainly not the case. Um, as far as the antioxidant uh, capacity, or particular to like polyphenols, um, in your typical cup of green tea, um, I believe, and I'd have to look this up to be uh, certain, but um, it's about um, 40 to, to 65, is it, um, um, parts of polyphenol um, per cup. But again, let me look that up to see uh, what the exact um, 
um, parameter parameters. And then of the percent of polyphenol that's in that typical cup of green tea, um, 60 to 80% are catechins. So it gives you some idea what a powerful punch of catechins you get in a typical cup because the majority of the polyphenols that are there are in that catechin form. And it's the EGCG that's the, the most powerful of them all. Great. So um, I think uh, we just have time for one more question and something to kind of wrap up the program, which would be nice is, um, so let's, let's go back to Dr. Nada. What is your favorite way to drink tea or, or even to use matcha outside of a traditional tea experience? Um, outside of a traditional tea experience, um, I have actually used it um, to make sauce for fish. And so a lot this summer while I've been grilling, I've used um, matcha um, powder, mixed it in with some citrus and used it as a topping and it's been delicious. So definitely an unconventional way of, uh, of using it. You'll have to share your recipe with us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rona, what, what is, how do you best experience uh, matcha and green tea? And that can be both you know, the, the beverage, but then you mentioned the powder and other products. Well, I mean, there's so many different levels. I mean, I my favorite, of course, is when I get to use my chasen, and it takes it, and you you froth it to make a nice froth. But uh, you know, the purity of the matcha. But again, as Nada mentioned, it, it has such a versatile. I really believe that um, you know matcha, particularly culinary matcha, is something that sh everybody should have in their pantry. Um, you can be creative. You can add it to a sauce as Nada shared. Um, makes all sorts of beverages included with cocktails, you know? So I, I really suggest that people be adventurous and, and see what works with that for them, and whether it's baking in cakes, um, uh, you know, sauces, uh, I mean, it, it's endless. You can be creative. You can make your even your own matcha ice cream. Everybody loves green tea ice cream. You can actually do that at your home. Um, oftentimes with a haagen uh, and I buy the, uh, vanilla yogurt and I will mix it with matcha at the table and people think wow but it's so simple but uh, you can do that at home you should do that with your 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 son as well so I suggest people um, be creative um, and experiment and see what works for them but you know incorporating in your daily regime great well thank you so much Rona thank you Dr. Nada uh, unfortunately that's all the time we have for our moderated discussion um, uh, I, I can share as well for our listeners, um, if there are specific questions we did not have time to answer or uh, perhaps things that, uh, you know, additional questions that, uh, that you did not have time to ask, um, you can send them to Japan America Society and then we can send them to our panelists. Um, so that would be sending them to info at jasdfw.org. So again, that's info at jas dfw.org. Um, great. So now, um, again, I'd like to thank our distinguished speakers for their time and their willingness to share their expertise uh, at this very important time for our world. And we would also like to express our gratitude to everyone who attended the program and for your eagerness to explore Japanese health and wellness. Um, we're going to have in a moment some, uh, I think we'll have a slide coming up. Great. Uh, so we hope that you can join for some of our upcoming events. Next week on Tuesday, August 25th, we will host a program on air travel today and tomorrow in partnership with the Japan America Society of Georgia. And as you can see on the flyer, our speakers will include representatives from Hartsfield Jackson, Atlanta International Airport, Japan Airlines and Delta Airlines. On the evening of September 2nd, so just in a couple weeks, we will have our first ever virtual Otsukimi Moon Viewing Festival which will include performances from professional shamisen and koto musicians, community groups in Sendai, Japan, which is the friendship city for Dallas, a dango cooking demonstration, and commercials from Japanese restaurants in North Texas. Next month, on September 17th, it's coming up now, uh, we're excited, we, this is one of our, our newest programs that we, we uh, completed in terms of the preparation. Um, we will host a program on the effect of anime and Japanese pop culture on the rest of the world. And again, um, for this program and more that we have coming up, um, you can check www.jasdfw.org for regular updates as we schedule more programs into the fall. Um, and I believe we have one more slide. 
um, for some of our, um, our educational programming. So this is, uh, uh, so we talked a lot about food and, uh, and the best way to live, health and wellness. Um, so we do have a very interesting program focusing on, on Washoku. Um, this is looking at the education of food. And this, this program is specifically designed for students, but it really can be for anyone of you know, really all ages. Um, but this is a program that you would have to contact us. Um, so you can go to our website, www.jasdfw.org. And you can, you can also contact us at our info um, account. Um, so uh, we'll, we will also send, um, uh, there'll be a survey and other materials that will come to you. So you can find different ways to, to contact us. But um, this program is part of our Japan in a Suitcase initiative. And um, it's roughly 45 minutes to an hour long. It involves a presentation from one of our staff members. Um, there is a cost for this, but it is reasonable. It's um, depending on, on the size of your group, it could be between 20 to $30, uh, but please contact us if you would like more information. So again, um, our, you can go to our website, www.jasdfw.org. If you enjoyed this evening and similar programming, we kindly ask that you consider donating to the Japan America Society of Dallas-Fort Worth and, and promote its mission to, to better understanding between Japanese Americans. And as you can see, again, we have our QR code. All you need to do is put your cell phone um, up to that screen and um, we will share the, uh, the link in the chat box as well in case you are not able to access that QR code. This concludes this evening's program. Thank you for attending. And have a wonderful rest of the evening for our U.S. attendees and a great rest of the day for those in Japan. Thank you very much.